Hey guys, welcome back. So the Zabbix 7.2 has been a while for quite some time, and I guess it's a perfect time to make a video about how you can actually install the Zabbix 7.2 on your system, on your Linux machine. And at the same time, I do understand that for those who are with Zabbix for quite some time, this video probably is not going to contain anything new because as it usually goes, the installation is pretty much the same across all sort of the major things. But if you're someone who is just starting out with Zabbix, most likely you're looking on how you can install the most recent version. So there you go, another tutorial video. And just to make my life easier and simpler, as it usually is, I'm again going to be using the uh, the wiki from the initmax who is also the, the zabbix uh, partner premium i think and uh, they actually have quite a lot uh different tutorials and guides about the zabbix so go ahead check it out i will post it also into the in the description of this video but uh before we start so i also have the virtual machine and this one is uh not zabbix uh red hat release this one is alma linux 9.0 so quite up to date system i don't really use ubuntu in my daily life so sorry guys but uh, if you do have ubuntu i have the installation guide for the zabbix 7.0 on that so uh the first things like operating system selection and obviously you need to choose i guess this guide is also built in a way that you can choose like which system you're running yeah you see also the commands are ch changing i'm using the alma linux so this one will be for me if you have something else like debian go ahead and check it out before we start set and for zero and uh Set and for zero, what it basically does is disables the SL Linux, which is then security enhanced Linux, which is not entirely a firewall, more like, uh, I don't know, something similar. Uh, but it works uh, on the system, within the system, not like the external connections, not only the external connections, but also what is happening internally on the system itself. And if you have it on, which globally, security wise, I guess would be more recommended, then you just need to fine tune it to make sure that uh, it will not block any operations uh, done by the Zabbix, including just starting the service or stuff like that. Then obviously we need to install uh, <clears throat> repositories, but I don't want to install the Postgres. So we'll install Postgres repositories and disable the default system Postgres, again, Postgres SQL repositories. Uh, Initmax do love uh, Postgres SQL. For me, it's a bit more complicated. So I will actually do the MySQL. But at the same time, let me check. Uh, system CTL start MySQL D. Um, yeah, I already have MySQL, so I'm not going to install it separately. If you don't, if you just have a clear system, uh, just set up virtual machine, first thing that you need to do is install the database engine. And you're free to choose. You can go with a MySQL, you can go with MariaDB. You cannot go with Oracle anymore because it's not supported since Zabbix 7.2. Uh, or you can go with a Postgres SQL and or timescale db like if that's the way you want to go you can just copy paste the command so i already have the database installed that's one of my test systems so i don't need to run any of these commands next installation of the zabbix server and its components so what we're gonna need to do we need to add the repository of the zabbix 7.2 this is what it is so i'll just copy paste this command here and as you can see, we just installed the repository 721. And the next step is just to install all the required packages for the Zabbix, which is the Zabbix server. I need to adjust this because I don't... Let us actually do it here. So there we go. Uh, I don't need a Zabbix server Postgres SQL because I don't have a Postgres. I have a MySQL. And for each database engine, there is a separate package. Uh, same goes for the web. So one package is the Zabbix server, the core, the heart of all the Zabbix monitoring. Uh, second one is the Zabbix frontend. Um, Zabbix Apache configuration file, SQL scripts, Zabbix agent 2, and Zabbix web service. And I can add in the end uh, minus Y for to just confirm all the installations, right? So now we can make a little coffee break. As you can see, I have an error here, uh, unable to find Zabbix web MySQL because it's actually missing the L in the end. So I will write it separately. Yum install Zabbix web MySQL minus Y. And 
There we go. Installation will be completed in a second. There we go. So this is done right now. We should have all the required packages that we need and it's time to initialize the database. But again, let's remember this one is for the Postgres. I don't have a Postgres, so I'll have to figure out how to do that for the MySQL. And uh, for MySQL, you just need to go into MySQL. Uh, we need to create a database. Uh, let me actually uh, check if it is available here. Get Zabbix, uh, Zabbix packages 7.2, MySQL Apache. <clears throat> yeah, there we go. Create database Zabbix, character set. I will drop. I have an old database still here, so don't run this command. And when you have a clean database, you can just copy paste to, first of all, create the database called Zabbix with the required character set UTF-8 MB4 and collation UTF-4 MB4 bin. That is done. Then we need to create a user, which we're going to use to connection. Uh, paste. So create, let me give me a second, a user called Zabbix, which will be able to access this database only from the local host and our Zabbix server and database is going to be on the same host. Identified by and here in the text you just put in the password. So in my case, it's also going to be the Zabbix. Um, it's failed because it already exists. I already have this user. So we can skip this. Uh, grant all privilege. I will do that. Grant all privilege on the Zabbix database to all the tables to the Zabbix at local host user. Then we need to run this command set global logbin trust function creators equals one, and then we can quit from the database. Then we just need to import uh, the schema. Schema came together with the SQL scripts package that we also installed, and we can just go there. Let me move this a bit aside. Uh, let me do it like this. We can go to the user share Zabbix uh, SQL. We don't have a SQL scripts anymore. Interesting. Find minus name. Uh, server SQL.jz. Not there. So let's look here. Uh, user share. It should be here. So let me find. Try to find again. Yum install. Uh, Zabbix SQL scripts should be here. DNF install Zabbix SQL scripts. Yeah, so it did not install it for some reason. I don't know why. So we're missing the package Zabbix minus SQL minus scripts. Then we can go to the user share Zabbix uh, SQL scripts. And here we need to go to the MySQL because I have MySQL right now. And what we need to do is. Yeah, basically, we can just copy paste this command it here so zcat uh, server.sqljz mysql pipe it user zabbix password is going to prompt for me it's zabbix and database is also zabbix this will take around a couple of um i don't know seconds where we're maybe some minute depending on the speed and and power of your virtual machine or physical server so another coffee break this is done. Uh, so right now we have a database fully prepared for the Zabbix. Uh, we can run these firewall commands because obviously we will want to um, already enabled for me. Uh, we will want to access our web frontend right through the usual HTTP port. And uh, 10051 is the Zabbix server default port. And then we just reload uh, the firewall and that will be done. Timescale DB installation. Again, this is relevant only if you have the Postgres as a backend database for the Zabbix. So if you're using all this tutorial from the initmax, it's not relevant for me. Uh, then we can proceed to the Zabbix server configuration. Uh, this is taking longer than usual. There we go. Uh, so <clears throat> to proceed, we can edit the Zabbix server config file, which is, uh, again, it's not installed. Yum install Zabbix server MySQL. I don't know why, like initial my command to install all, all of the packages failed, probably because I had that one uh, package with a typo. So uh, vi etsy zabbix zabbix underscore server dot conf. And what we need to do is find db password. I can copy paste this. 
and db password that's for the database that we created remember i've set it uh to the zabbix db user is zabbix and uh, db name also was zabbix um start report writers equals one if you want to have uh shuttled reports for your zabbix installation right then you also need to um language packs if you want you can do that again it's going to be in the init max documentation like for me the default language pack is enough uh, finally we restart all the related services and configure them to start automatically on the boot so i'll just copy paste this um fail to restart again some some packages are not installed so yum install zabbix web mysql Okay, system CTL restart HTTPD and PHP FPM. Wait, which package am I missing again? Let me copy paste from here. DNF install, copy paste. Something was missing, definitely. It's completed, and right now we can try to run this again. Uh, scroll below here. Yeah, restart all of the services. Uh, Zabbix web service not found. Tail minus fr log Zabbix Zabbix server dot log. So the server is running. Let me actually check is the web running or not. Um, set and force, I think it was already zero. Uh, 166 168 56 106 uh, alma linux test page yeah zabbix is here so uh you know it fails because it's looking for the this wait no actually no no yeah i was thinking that it's probably because it's the postgres ending but no there's no uh, suffix for the database so just log into your uh, ip address it's going to be the first time connection wizard page, which supposedly is going to show that all the parameters are OK. That's how it should be. Uh, next step, database type MySQL. This will be the one which uh, Zabbix frontend package you choose. I choose MySQL, right? Uh, database host, it is installed locally on my system. Port is default one, 3306. Database name is Zabbix. Credentials in plain text. User is Zabbix and password is also Zabbix. So next step um yeah whatever uh zabbix server name subscribe as per usual default team let's make it dark and next next congratulations you have successfully installed the zabbix front end uh default username is admin with a capital a and the default password is lowercase zabbix uh, there you go your zabbix front end and the zabbix server is also running you can double check that again in the linux using the uh, log file which is in the var log zabbix zabbix server dot log everything works everything is good the version is zabbix 7.2.1 so again thank you guys for watching and see you in the next videos don't forget to subscribe smash the like button and goodbye